Welcome to the Solar Game University channel. This video's topic is HSS versus HSM. So in this video, I want to show you how both of these tool paths could work on a part such as the one we're looking on the screen here, one that has some surfaces on it, some curvature to it, for both finishing um, but how they would attack it and what the differences are between them and possibly when you would use one versus the other. So let's begin with the couple of surfaces on the side here that I'm going to refer to as continuous surfaces. So the reason I call them continuous surfaces, as you can see, is they're, they're large surfaces and they basically have a direction to them. Now, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that all these surfaces that uh, fall under this category have to be linear in nature. All I'm referring to here is that they're large surfaces and they have some sort of flow to them, some sort of uh, curvature. Uh, maybe they follow uh, a nice uh, two lines and they blend between them. Something about them looks continuous. There's, there's a, a flow to it is the best way to describe it. Now, um, I've done both an HSS and an HSM on these selected surfaces here. So let's start with the HSS. HSS is a surface-based toolpath. So essentially what that means is if I want to do these surfaces here, in my geometry, I'm literally going to choose those surfaces. And in terms of the travel of the tool and whatnot, they are totally enclosed inside of those surfaces that I've selected. I have many options on, on how to leave the surface or whatnot, but on basis, on the default of, of HSS, you're really just staying on those surfaces. They're going to drive the toolpath, and that's why they're called drive surface. I've opted to use parallel cuts linear because it is the simplest version of HSS, and because those surfaces do have a linear nature to them, they yield themselves to the use of parallel cuts linear. I've just defined the line I'd like to follow in terms of my linear under line, and I chose two points. Uh, I'm using a quarter inch ball nose. Uh, my levels in HSS, there are no levels. Uh, there's just the clearance distance safety distance as well. Now that's again because this is just for finishing so there's nothing I need to clear other than the surfaces themselves but being driven by the surfaces it knows exactly where to retract to to avoid colliding with those particular surfaces. I'm just doing a 50 thou step over and I've just made sure that uh, any kind of gaps along the cut or link between the slices it'll follow the surfaces but in general that's all I need to do. I choose the surfaces, choose my tool, apply a step over and I do a save and calculate and I'll get a tool path that looks like that. Now I've told it to jump those gaps as well, but it's really just doing those surfaces that I've chosen. So you can see it's a linear tool path that's just basically following those two edges there. And all I had to do was choose the surface. Now if I try and do the same surfaces with an HSM, I'll have to do it a little differently. HSM is a target-based tool path, meaning that it recognizes the geometry from the target. So that's why it pre-selects the target and it's really just going to machine anything of that solid, anything of the target it finds within the constraint boundary that I've defined here. And the constraint boundary was the outside edges of those surfaces. You can see they're outlined in purple. So I actually had to go in there and select those edges to make a totally enclosed contour. And you would do that using the same sort of contour control as you have in other tool paths of solid camp. But you have to go in there and tell it to limit the travel of the tool. So again, we're already seeing our first difference. In HSS, it's driven by the surfaces. It knows to just stay within those surfaces because you just want to machine those particular surfaces. With HSM, it wants to do the entire target. So you have to add a constraint boundary to limit the travel of the tool. In this case, I just want it to stay within those particular linear surfaces that we're looking at. The tool is the same. Under my passes, I'm still also doing a 50 thou step over, but here, even though it's still just doing a finishing, I need to tell it where I'd like to go in the Z direction. So I have to limit the travel in Z. So this is both a benefit of HSM and kind of uh, a disadvantage compared to HSS. Here, I can tell it, well, I only want to do a linear tool path, let's say only down to a particular Z depth. Now that might be a benefit, but here, I just want to worry about just doing those particular surfaces. Is my Z bottom enough? Well, this is really just a envelope to work within. So I've just set it as the bottom of the part. So for sure, it'll machine all the surfaces that it finds within that constraint boundary using this technology. And I guess that's the other difference here between HSM and HSS. HSS has, as you've seen in the previous videos, uh, a couple of technologies, whereas HSM, it has many. And here's the main difference. 
I've chosen linear machining so that I can get as close to a similar toolpath as HSS. And I'm doing a linear surface here, so when we generate the toolpath, it actually looks like a linear toolpath. But being a target-based toolpath, it actually tried to go down here as well, because these surfaces also are part of the target, which fall within my boundary area. So that's why it's going down there, unlike what it did with HSS, and only machining the particular surfaces that I selected. But being a linear machining, it looks like it was a good fit. But with HSM, it finds a technology, you, you tell it which technology you want it to use and applies that to whatever services that you've told it to, whatever part of the target you told it to. With HSS, everything's driven by the services themselves. So the toolpath is tailored to the services that you selected. Whereas with HSM, you basically choose the, t the technology and then you hope that it applies well to the surface that you selected. Here, I did linear to get them both the same, but HSM, it basically chooses the technology and then forces it on the group of surfaces that you've selected. Now, let's do what I've called numerous surfaces. So this is uh, mainly, in my opinion, one of the more uh, uh, um, yardsticks for when you're going to use HSS versus HSM. Numerous surfaces, I've ref I've refer I'm referring to them here as all these little tiny surfaces you see on this side of the part. And these are where you want to use HSM. So that's why I started with HSM. If I just open this up, I program this similar to what we did before. Uh, my geometry is still the target. So I'm just telling it that of this entire solid in the constraint boundary, I wanted to do just what's inside that circle. So if we look at it from the top view, it's really just going to do what it finds inside that circle. I've chosen the technology of 3D constant step over. So that's essentially just going to apply a three dimensional sort of spiraling kind of radial kind of step over tool path within that circle. And because I've chosen 3D constant step over, I have to tell it to step over from a particular contour. In this case, again, I've told it that circle. So this is just a standard HSM. I've given it constraint boundaries, a drive boundary. It's driven by the target but it'll stay within that complete circle. And in my passes, I told it to do a 50,000 step over and my Z topsy bottom. Again, I've just done the top and the bottom of the part. I don't wanna to have to worry how deep to go. I just gave it that envelope to work with. And that generates a toolpath like that. All I had to do was just tell it how far to travel using a constraint boundary, but that's about it. Just the constraint boundary itself is the only constraint here. If I try to do the same area, the same selection of services using an HSS, it actually overcomplicates it because all those little surfaces there, I had to actually select them. So these are all the surfaces that I wanted to apply within that circle. I had to go and individually choose each one. And that also means that I had to zoom in and out just to get the little tiny surfaces here and maybe in all other areas. I've opted to use the projection technology from HSS, just again to get them as close as possible to matching what the HSM looks like. So I've told it the center of the circle of that sketch, I've actually hidden the sketch, so let me bring that back on screen. So the center of that circle right here was the center point of my spiral, and I've told it the exact radius of that circle. And again, to match as closely as possible to the HSM, to give you a good comparison, I've actually told it to use a 2D boundary as well. So HSS still can use constraint boundaries, and this is one of the few times you would want to use it. But you can already see it's overcomplicating it. When I did HSM, I basically just said, that's the circle. That's what I want to use to constraint. That's what I want to use for a step over. Just use that. Here, I had to say, use the circle to constraint the tool path. Here's the center of the circle. Here's the radius of the circle. I'm already giving it more information than I feel is necessary. I don't want to have to go through this whole hassle. The tool is the same. Here, the levels, again, it's just a clearance area. So I don't actually have to do anything there. But after having to give all those parameters there, when I generate the tool path, I get a similar tool path. So all that extra work just to get HSS to work, when really HSM was the better option. It was the quickest option. So those are the, basically the differences between HSM. To give you just a quick review, quick rule of thumb, if you have many tiny surfaces, use HSM. You'll just put a constraint boundary around the area you want to finish, and you've already generated your toolpath. 
HSS is better for when you have larger flowing surfaces, something where you can actually see the direction and you can uh, determine the technology from there. Uh, you can look at this and say, use linear. You can look at this and say, maybe a constant Z tool path. If it's a type of surface where it is just a single surface such as this one, maybe a morph between boundary curves automatically yields itself to a nice tool path and it will just completely constrain itself in this one tool path. If I just needed to do this one surface using HSM, I'd have to try the different technologies to see which one was the best fit, probably something like a morph machining, just, just to see if I can morph between one side or the other, and then a constraint boundary that is totally the outside of that. But already you can hear that I'm going through extra steps just to do this one surface. So it's usually between the two, which one is going to be the simplest? If it's large surfaces, and it has a flow to it, use HSS. If it's numerous little surfaces and it's a very surface heavy part, use HSM. Just put a constraint boundary around there and it'll just apply itself to that one particular area. Any questions on this or anything else from SolarCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension two. You send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solarcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.